Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be finishing off the lobby system that we started in the previous video. Last time, we mainly focused on setting up the main menu so the player can enter their name, go to either host or join a game, and they can actually host or join the game, it works, but there is no lobby UI, there's no way for the players to see who else is in their lobby, there's no way to ready up or start the game. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get started. So this video will be split up into three parts. Part one, we'll get all the coding out of the way. So we have to add a little bit more to our network manager and we need to write the code for the room player. We made an empty script for that last time. We need to now write the logic to store their name, store whether they're ready or not and handle what happens when they press the ready up button. We need to then in step two, make the UI so that the player in the lobby can see who else is in there, update the names, update the ready status and then actually have some buttons so all the players in the lobby will have a ready button to say when they're ready to start. And then the actual lobby leader will have a button that is only interactable once everyone is readied up. But then even once they press that, we still need to make sure on the server that they are ready. And then finally for step three, we'll be testing it. So we'll do a build, we'll run it in Unity, we'll run it in a built executable, and we'll try and connect and see if we can see it all updating correctly. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get started. So for step one, we'll start off in the network manager lobby. We're going to add two new variables. We're going to add um, an integer for the min players that we can set in the inspector. I'm going to set it to two. So this is the number required to actually start the game. So once two players have readied up, we can start up to a maximum of, in my case, four. But in your case, you can change it to be whatever you want. And then down here, we have a list of room players so that each client, including the server as well, so every person in the game will be able to know and loop over if they need to and do things to all the other room players. So for example, we need to display the names of all the different people. We want to be able to loop over and do that kind of thing. So we store that here in the game manager. Okay, so at the bottom, we want to override on server disconnect, which is called on the server when a client disconnects and we get told who that client is. So we're going to say for that client, go get their um, room player script, which currently doesn't have anything on it, but it will. And we want to basically just remove that from our list. Okay, so that's only on the server. The clients will do it differently. And then uh, we actually want to notify and up, basically update everyone's ready state. Now, we don't have that method yet, but we're going to get around to it. And then make sure to call the base implementation at the end um, because this actually does something. This will destroy the player for the connection. Then actually above this in the method that we already have on server add player, I've added two lines. One to figure out if this pers person that's being added is going to be the leader. The leader is the first person in the lobby. So basically if the player count is zero at this point when they're, you know, connecting, then it means that they are the leader. And then once we spawn them in, we want to set this variable as leader, which also doesn't currently exist, but we're going to leave it there anyway. So this allows us to uh, tell a client if they are a leader. Now, always we want to make sure that the server validates that kind of stuff. So later on, um, when the, uh, the leader tries to start the game, the server will be the one deciding whether you're allowed to start the game or not. But obviously for the sake of the UI to show the start game button, we only want to show that to the leader. So we're going to let them know that is leader. And obviously based on that, we can actually render the UI differently for the client. So on stop server actually gets called for everyone when a server is stopped. So if you are the server or if you're a client on a server, all that stuff, we can actually clear this list and reset it, which means that when you now go and queue for a new game, it's cleared. Okay, that's one little quick thing to add. So the method we wrote up here, notify players of ready state, we're gonna make that now, so it's a public void. We want to loop over all the players and call handle ready to start. And then we pass in a Boolean, true or false, based on whether we're ready to start or not. Okay, and in this case, we actually need another method to figure that out. I just thought it's better to spread it out rather than putting all the logic in this for each loop. So the logic to check if we're ready to start is here. So what we're gonna do is we say, okay, if the number of players, which is how many people are currently connected, if that is less than the minimum, then return false. We're obviously not ready to start if we don't have enough people. But if we do have enough people, then we say loop over all the people and say, if they're not ready, so if, if any one person is not ready, then we return false because we need everybody in the room to be ready to start, okay? Now this is ready boolean, we're obviously gonna add, we uh, just like is leader, we're gonna have that kind of stuff, okay? But then if we get to the end, this means that we have enough people and everyone is ready, then we return true, okay? And then that's actually everything I think we're gonna do in here. I'm pretty sure this is, yep, this is everything we're gonna do in the network manager. So we're gonna now make these variables and these methods over in the room player. That's the next place to go to. Okay, so the network room player lobby, just remember that this script sits on the player that is spawned in when they connect and then, you know, destroyed when they leave. And you have one for every player. So if you have UI on this, which is my current solution, um, feel free to let me know if there's a better solution. But because I have UI here, and for example, I want button presses to, um, you know, start the game and ready up, I just thought I'd do it all in here. So I've got 
reference to the lobby UI to turn it on and off. So it's off by default, but I turn it on if the object belongs to me. So I don't have like, you know, a, a UI active for every single player, only the one that's mine will be active. Then we have the player name texts. And that, that's just basically for showing all the names, right? One, two, three, four. And you just pass those in in the game object. Same for the ready texts. You instead could use an image or whatever you want to, you know, display whether they're ready or not. But I've just gone for some text that'll say ready in green or not ready in red. And then the start game button, I just have that referenced here so I can turn it on and off based on whether you are the um, the lobby leader or not, because only the lobby leader can actually do stuff with the button. And then we have two synced variables. So sync vars are variables that are, can only be changed on the server. And then when they get changed on the server, they get updated everywhere else. So the server is the only one that updates the display name and is ready. So we tell the server like, hey, I want to change my name or hey, I want to ready up. And the server will then handle the logic and let everyone else know. So it's uh, server validated. And what we say is this hook is um, the name of a method that is called when this happens. So whenever display name changes or whenever is ready changes, these methods are called respectively. We haven't made them yet. We're going to make them in a minute, but it's a way to update UI only when the variables change. It's kind of like an event. Then down here we have is leader. Now, I mean, the way I've done it is it's just a Boolean that we can set. We can't actually get it externally. I mean, I could make that, but there's no need. There's no use of it. We just want to set it, which is what we do in the network manager lobby over here somewhere. We set leader. Here we go. And when we set leader, what happens is it stores the value. Um, I might not even, I mean, I don't even need to store the value. Technically, I could just toggle this. But what I do is I say, um, take the start game button and turn off the object or turn it on based on the value of leader, right? So if it's true, then activate the button. If it's false, deactivate it. And then over here, I've got another getter. And this is just an easy way to store a variable. So um, the network manager that the actual mirror comes with has a singleton variable. Now I'm usually against using singletons, but for this kind of thing, for like the network manager, it's probably gonna be the only place I ever use it. Um, the network manager singleton is a network manager, but we want it as our own network manager lobby. So we have to do a cast, but luckily, well not luckily, but the, the way that I've done it here is we only ever cast once, okay? And this, this object persists between scenes, so it is only ever done once. The first time we try to access room, it says, well, if it's not null, then just return it. But if it is null, then basically get it, okay? And this is just an easy way in our code to just keep saying room rather than saying, you know, all of this every single time, rather than copy pasting this everywhere, just say room. So on start authority gets called on the object that belongs to us effectively when it starts. So all we say is we say activate this one because it's ours, okay? And we also want to do a command. Remember commands are functions called by clients that get run on the server. So we're gonna make a function in a minute called command set display name that takes in a string. The string, if you remember from last video, is over here, the display name. So we set it and then we get it here. Now, equally, we could actually grab it here from player press. I was considering doing that, but you know, I'm happy with it like this for now. Uh, so we go grab it from that script. We set it and that's going to be called on the server. The server then validates that. Now, in my case, I don't need any validation. You know, if they tell me this is their name, then I trust them. You know, maybe you want to add in something that says, you know, nope, you can't have a name that's, you know, less than two characters or that has swear words or whatever. You can, you know, do all that logic yourself on the server, but I'm happy just trusting them for now. Then on start client gets called on every network behavior when it's active on a client. So we add it to our list of room players. So room.roomplayers.add, and we add this instance, and then we update our UI. So whenever something starts, we update the UI. Whenever something's destroyed, so whenever uh, a client, this is invoked on clients when the server has caused the object to be destroyed. So even if it's not us disconnecting, this still gets called when like someone else disconnects. We remove them from our list and we update the UI. Next, we have two methods, handle ready status changed and handle display name changed. Notice how these are the same names of these methods I used up here, okay, for the sync vars. And for this to actually compile, you need for a boolean to take in two bools and for a string to take in two strings. And you need to, I don't know if you have to call them old and new value, but I would just to be safe, okay? Now you don't actually have to use those values, but you still have to have them for it to work, okay? And then what we want to do in both these cases is we want to update the display, okay? So now we're gonna have the function for updating display. This will be completely dependent on how your UI looks. But in my case, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, when playing updating display, if it's not our local player that's been updated, we actually want to go and we want to update the player that's for us. Now, this is pretty much like a hacky workaround that, you know, isn't probably ideal. And I'm going to come up with a solution, a better solution at some point, And someone can feel free to point out to me below. But basically, 
let's imagine we've got the four player UI objects for all our different players and that I'm player one and you're player two. Well, when you update your ready status, it's actually your version of that object on my network is the one that's going to have this function call. But I want to update my version of the UI. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty hacky workaround, but it works just fine. So if you're happy with this for now, then go ahead. Otherwise, try and make a better solution than mine. But what it does is, yeah, if this doesn't belong to us, then go find the one that belongs to us. That, that's basically what it's saying. If not the local player, go find the one that's the local player. And I should actually change this probably to has authority. Uh, so basically never use is local player, even though it works in this case, it has authority is better. Because local player only works if the object is the player object. But if it's still, if it belongs to us, but it's not our player object, then it won't return true. And we want it to return true if we have authority, which is this. So if we don't have authority, find the player that has authority and update their display instead. Okay, that's what's happening. But then if it does belong to us, we want to say go over all the player's name texts and set the names to waiting for player and set the ready text to empty. So we basically clear everything and then we go through and we set the text to be the person's display name and we set the text for the ready, the ready text to be, well, if, they're, if they are ready, then set it to a green ready. And if they're not ready, set it to a red not ready. And obviously, yeah, clearing all the text and setting it all back is more than it needs to be done. Technically, you only need to update the ones that you need to update. So you could write some logic here to figure out which ones need to update. But at the end of the day, I would consider that like over optimizing because I only have four players. So it's pretty much instantaneous anyway. I'm not, I don't care about updating the UI. Usually updating UI is quite expensive and it is, but because this isn't during gameplay, this is just in the lobby and it's for four people. It really doesn't need to be optimized. I'd rather, I'd favor the simplicity of the code rather than some complex, you know, figuring out this one changed. Uh, it's, it's not even as easy as just figuring out which changes because if someone leaves the lobby, then presumably you want to shift all the other players up in the list and you know, there's more to it than that. So I'd say just clear everything and just set it all back is probably the best solution. So one other method we called in the network manager that we didn't have here, but that we do now, is handle ready to start. So the server will tell all clients when people ready up and you know unready and leave and join to basically update the ready status. It'll tell them the ready status. And then if we're not the leader, we don't actually care. So only the leader cares. The leader will then turn on and off their button, their start game button, based on whether we're ready to start or not. So we have three more methods to end it off. They're all commands. And we need a command for setting the display name that we said earlier. And for now, on the server when we receive the name we want to set, we just set it because we don't actually care um, what it is coming in. Obviously, as I said, if you want to validate the name they've said, then feel free to do that here before setting it. But I'm happy just to set the name. Then when they ready up, when we're told that they want to ready up, we just say is ready is the opposite of is ready. So we turn it on and off as a toggle. And then whenever it changes, we uh, notify the players of the ready state. So we tell the room to do that. Remember room, and this is on the server. So this is all being called on the server as it's a command. And then finally, command start game, where we basically say on the server, if um, the person, if the first person in the room is not this person, then return. So we basically make sure on the server here that this player is the leader, that they are the p first person in the room. And if they are, then start game. Now, start game could mean anything right now. We're going to actually do that in the next video. Otherwise, this one will go on too long. Obviously, let me know down below if you want to have a third video where I show going to the game. But yeah, that's it for the coding. Now, let's get into the rest. So over here on the room player, we're going to want to make the UI. So you'll already have the room player as an empty prefab from the last episode. And over here, it had nothing on it. Now it's got all these fields we're going to fill in in a minute. So if we go over here, we've got a child canvas. Okay. And the child canvas is where the UI is going to go. Then we've got a panel filling up the entire screen. You can pause and look at all this or go onto my GitHub page and look through it there. We've got these four different backgrounds. Well, they're all the same, really. They're just duplicated. So we're going to look into one of them. Then you just copy it for the rest. So it's uh, just an image with a gray background. On here, we've got two different texts. We've got the waiting for player text, and then we've got the ready text, which sits there, okay? And by default, there's no text for someone who isn't in the lobby. If, if for example, you know, we've got two players, then we're not gonna say not ready for the other two players, we'll just not say anything. But then if someone is ready, then in green, so in like color equals green, uh, then we'll say like ready, okay? So that's what it's going to look like if they're ready. And if they're not ready, then it'll be red and say not ready. Uh, let's actually just clear this text because we want to leave it blank by default. Obviously have four of these. And then um, we have a button for starting the game, which when you start the game, you call the room lobby. So drag in, drag in this, okay? Network room lobby dot command start game. 
And then this, this button should be deactivated by default. It's only activated manually on the lobby leader. Then the ready button is always on and that calls command ready up, which is also on the room player, okay? Then once you're done, disable the canvas for the lobby. And then over here, we want to set everything up. So we'll drag canvas lobby into here. I'm actually gonna lock this and then open this up. So the text for the player names will go one, two, three, four. I'm just holding control and direct clicking on them all. Okay, so let's put that in there. Now, the way I've done this, let's just set it back to zero and then try again. Okay, I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm gonna set the ready text, one, two, three, four. Drag those in. Whoops, you need to drag it onto the variable name. There you go. And then the start game button is down here. So let's drag the start game button over here. And we don't need to change anything else. That is done. That is done and dusted. So once that's done, we actually want to go back to our network manager. Now you'll notice over here, I've got the room player that is still referenced. So th that's fine. And then over here for the player prefab, we never actually use that player prefab. That is never used. So what I decided to do is I just made an empty game object. Okay, it's literally here. An empty game object with an identity on it. That is it. And I just saved it as a prefab here called it empty. And I just drag that in because I don't really want anything there for the player prefab. We spawn our stuff in manually. And one other thing to mention is these prefabs I've put inside a folder called spawnable prefabs. We actually made the code for this last time. If you go over to the network manager, we have this code here to read from spawnable prefabs in resources. So just make sure, actually, yeah, that's one problem. So I need to go here and create a folder called resources and then put that inside of resources. Okay, that'll work now. Okay, now that we're done with that, I think we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go build and see what happens. Okay, let's test it. So if I go over here and press confirm host, you see my name is YouTube and I'm not ready and I can ready up and it changes. And I go over here to the lobby tutorial, this one, Dapper, press continue, join, joining my local host. I've actually joined and you saw it update over there. When I ready up over here, it changes on both. Okay, when I change my ready. And if I ready up here and ready up over here, the start game button actually goes active. And obviously all you need to do now is actually write some code to when they press start game to go start the game, which will be my next video if you need help with that. Then as soon as someone unreadies, the button is no longer clickable. Even if it's me over here, you see when I ready and unready, it actually toggles that button there. So yeah, everything works just fine. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you need access to the project and you're stuck at all, down below on GitHub, you can go get access. Feel free to let me know as well in the comments down below what you want to see next. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Share the video. Every little bit helps. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Heidi Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.